Uh, one of the issues that, uh, or two of the issues they wanted us to uh, concentrate on, first one was certainly Brexit. We have provided reassurance that, uh, that people from the island of Cyprus who are in this country will remain very welcome in the United Kingdom. And they also gave us reassurances that British people who have gone to live in Cyprus, particularly to retire, would also remain welcome. So we're very grateful for that. But the other issue was about the proposed talks uh, at the UN. And one of the initiatives that I've taken upon myself is to seek, uh, as previous Prime Ministers have, is to have a representative from the Prime Minister who's able to assist with the Foreign Office and the Foreign Office Ministers. There was some criticism made about a representative of the Foreign Office that he wasn't very sympathetic. And I think that was fair criticism. So I've taken it up with number 10. I followed it up with them last week. And I'm hoping that they do appoint someone uh, I mentioned to Roger Gale, perhaps it could be Roger, someone, uh, an elder statesman, someone who can actually speak to both parts of the community and also speak directly to the Foreign Office. And I really hope that that proposal is taken up and that will be something not only tangible, um, demonstrably showing Britain's um, role within the peace process, but also a practical measure that can perhaps, just perhaps, make an agreement acceptable to both sides of the island. As I said, we visited the island and we also took the opportunity that I've never done before um, to undertake a walking tour within the green zone at Nicosia. Now, why we have been into places like Wayne's Keep in the past, um, it was very insightful for many members of our delegation to actually see time frozen. And I was particularly pleased to see on a BBC documentary recently where Simon Reeves, his Mediterranean, that he did the same. And I think it brings to the attention of a whole new generation that there is a part of the European Union that is still in conflict uh, and, as I said, is frozen in time. And it certainly brings it home to you when you see the cars frozen, you see buildings with bills of sale left on the floor, uh, and a whole eeriness around a deserted part of a European capital city. And for me, that was very telling. And as I said, many of my colleagues found that very unusual and again certainly um, spurned their interest in the issue of Cyprus and indeed the possibility of a peace process going forward. Violence, int intimidation and blackmail reached their maximum point when a Turkish Cypriot nationalist movement was organized in Cyprus. They started a terror campaign with killings of both Turkish and also Greek Cypriots who wanted to promote cooperation and peace. Turkish nationalism was met with similar aggression by Greek nationalists who at the same time started an anti-colonial struggle with the aim of union with Greece, Enosis. Britain's response to the anti-colonialist -colonial struggle and the growing violent conflict between the two communities was to include Greece and Turkey in the discussions for a solution to the problem. The search for a solution resulted in a conditional independence burdened with both internal and external limitations and restrictions. The internal limitations included the breaking of the principle of a unitary state and the creation of separate categories of citizenship for Greeks and Turks. The resulting constitution was undemocratic, unworkable, unjust, as well as being sectarian and even racist. In response, Turkey, although previously passing the colonization of Cyprus over to Britain, that is the Ottomans in, 19, in 1878, were now making plans on how to regain a foothold in Cyprus once more. Turkey ceased on an opportunity gifted by the coup d'etat against President Makarios in 1974 to invade Cyprus. The invading Turkish military army seized nearly 40% of the island after brutally attacking the island by air through a relentless bombardment as well as by sea. Its army marched nearly unopposed, killing and injuring thousands of Cypriots 200,000 refugees fled the violence and ran away to save their lives. 
the decision to set, to set up a self-proclaimed Turkish state of Northern Cyprus and the draw of a barbed wire word line of partition right through the capital city of Nicosia has had disastrous consequences for all Cypriots. More than anything, while we were conducting statistical research in the process of collecting our 50,000 signatures, we were very encouraged with the positive feedback we received from Turkish Cypriots who showed solidarity with our campaign for Famagusta. Our campaign and persistence on this issue found allies with the APPG for Cyprus and promoted a motion at the House of Commons and at the same time generated fresh interest, discussion and debate on the issue. The House of Commons on the 16th of November 2015 unanimously adopted a resolution on Cyprus and Famagusta specifically, which between others endorses the declaration of the European Parliament of 14 February 2012 on the return of Famagusta to its lawful inhabitants. And notes that the city of Famagusta in the Republic of Cyprus was captured by the invading Turkish forces in August 1974 under the direct control and the Turkish milit military, and that the return of Famagusta to its lawful inhabitants would facilitate efforts toward a comprehensive settlement of the Cyprus problem. That was the House of Commons on the 16th of November 2015. I don't know it as well as I know Morfu. I'm an honorary citizen of Morfu. But I do understand what you want and why you feel the way you feel. Uh, and having been to Cyprus so many times over so many years, I don't think anybody, any sensible politician, well, there are one or two, couldn't, um, couldn't fail but understand what we're all working for. I hope, I have to hope, as you have to hope, that Nikos Anastasiadis and Mustafa Akinji can still talk and pick up where they left off and strike a deal. And I firmly believe that if it was left to those two men, a deal would be done. But unfortunately, of course, there's the elephant in the room. <laughs> One Mr. Erdogan. And that makes life rather difficult. Now, you're all of a certain age, so I'm teaching grandmother to suck eggs, but most of you will know as I know. I Brexit or no Brexit? Inevitably, any speech in London has to be addressed with a dreaded B word, Brexit. The, our relations between Cyprus and the United Kingdom, of course, will go on. It's an umbilical relationship, a historical relationship, a, a relationship based on, on common values, based on common law. We have the Commonwealth that also binds us together. And we have so many issues beyond the Cyprus question. People-to-people -people contacts, which are a human bridge. You are a human bridge. The 70,000 expats or so in Cyprus that are also the human bridge here in the United Kingdom. Educational exchanges, trade, tourism, and yes, working together, fighting scourge of modern day scourge like terrorism in the Eastern Mediterranean because the Eastern Mediterranean is of cardinal importance for the survivability of the countries in the region and, of course, for the, for the um, uh, European Union and for the United Kingdom. That's why the United Kingdom uh, uh, has the bases in Cyprus as well, which, by the way, because many people are asking me about the bases at, at times, they are not part of the Republic of Cyprus. When we say Cyprus as a subject of international law, Cyprus that has a seat at the United Nations in, uh, at the Commonwealth or in the EU is all the territory of Cyprus, east-west, the northern occupied part, southern part, the government control area of the Republic is all the territory of the Republic except the two British bases which remain Her Majesty's uh, uh, government uh, territory. And by the way, 
uh, you know, I think the, the Prime Minister announced that we have had an agreement as to the modalities because of Brexit and how that would affect, uh, uh, would affect the day-to-day -day operations uh, of the many of the Cypriots that live in the bases and they work in the bases. But my, my talk is not about Brexit and, and maybe time permitting, if people want to ask me any questions with pleasure, I'll be more than happy to answer, other than to, to repeat the fact that uh, uh, it is a sad reality. But we're not tired. We shall overcome. We go forward with tenacity and perseverance. And I always say go forward. If you can crawl, crawl. If you can walk, walk. If you can run, run. If you can fly, fly, but go forward. With a common vision. We may disagree with our Cypriot brothers of Turkish ethnic background about the history of the past. Let us agree about the history of the future. A future that it is together in a fundamentally new political context, which is the EU, and if the European Union has managed to solve the German give my full support to uh, what we've just heard. I first, um, I hope you can hear me, I'm sure you can. Um, I, I first visited Cyprus, I think, uh, three, four years ago, and uh, you, you made me so welcome. I, I learned so much about the issues uh, and the occupied territories and so on. And uh, I can assure you that of my continued support, I've since been back on two or three delegations with the uh, Conservative Friends of Cyprus, and uh, I've also taken a holiday year there. So uh, it's a wonderful country. You can uh, rely on my support, um, and uh, through the APPG that uh, Roger so uh, admirably uh, runs, uh, we'll do all we can to help and support you. So thank you very much, and apologies that I've got to uh, dash off. Γεια σα. Καλωσορίζουμε τον κύριο Βασίλη Μαύρο, τον πρόεδρο του Φαμπαγκούστα Association, εδώ στο House of Lords. Ήταν εκθεωρητική η εκδήλωσή σα. Πετε μα λίγο περισσότερα για την. Ευχαριστώ πάρα πολύ. Ε, νομίζω είχαμε περίπου 100 άτομα ή περισσότερα. Ε, το σημαντικό είναι ότι η παρική ανταποκρίνεται στο κάλεσμα μα. Εμεί συνεχίζουμε τον αγώνα. Ε, ακόμα μία δραστηριότητα από το Σύνδεσμο Ναμοχώς του Ηνωμένου Βασιλείου, εδώ στο Κοινοβούλιο, στο Βρετανικό Κοινοβούλιο. Ε, είχαμε αρκετούς βουλευτές, αν και περιμέναμε πολύ περισσότερους. Είχαμε τη Βαρόνη Μάση, τον MP Μάρτιν Βίκερς, τον Μάθιου Όφορτ, τον Πάμπο Χαραλάμπους, τον Ρότζερ Κέιλ, είχαμε τον πρέσβη μα ε, και... Είχαμε μια ωραία έτσι, συζήτηση γύρω από το Κυπριακό, αλλά πιο ειδικά για την, για την Αμόχωστον και την, μίλησαμε για την εξαρτησία της Κύπρου, που την γιορτάζουμε σε, αυτού, σε αυτόν τον μήνα. Ε, όλοι οι ομιλητές, οι, οι βουλευτές, εκφράστηκαν με τα καλύτερα λόγια για μια θετική λύση για το Κυπριακό πρόβλημα. Καταλαβαίνουν όλοι το πρόβλημα μας και υποσχέθηκαν ότι θα βοηθήσουν. Από δική μας πλευράς, εμείς ε, είπαμε το, το σημαντικό της ανεξαρτησίας της Κύπρου, όμως ταυτόχρονα αναφέραμε, αναφερθήκαμε και στο πρόβλημα ότι δυστυχώς η, η Αγγλία σαν μία από τις ε, καραντόρ ε, ε, χώρες της, στην Κύπρο δεν έκανε τίποτα για να βοηθήσει τη λύση του Κυπριακού και την επιστροφή των προσφύγων στα σπίτια τους, κάτι το οποίο ε, θέλουμε. Ε, και ζητήσαμε από την επιτροπή, αυτήν την επιτροπή των, των βουλευτών, την APPG, όπως μεσολαβήσει όπως και προηγουμένως, να περάσει ένα ψήφισμα, ένα motion για την αμόχωστο και για την Κύπρο και προτείναμε να ψηφίσουν, να προωθήσουν μάλλον το ίδιο ψήφισμα που περάσανε πριν από τρία χρόνια στις 15, 16 του 11 του, του, του 15, το οποίο μιλά Ξεκάθαρα ότι υπήρξε τουρκική εισβολή, υπήρξαν πρόσφυγες, κατοχή της Κύπρου, κατοχή του 38-40% του Κυπριακού Εδάφους και ότι πρέπει να επιστραφούν αυτά πίσω στους νόημους κατοίκους τους. Και η εισήγηση που κάναμε για την αμόχωστον, είπαν και αυτοί σε αυτόν τον motion ότι πρέπει να επιστραφεί αμόχωστο στους νόημους κατοίκου τη και να γίνει έτσι μία αρχή πριν αρχίσουν οι συνομιλίες ή στην αρχή τέλο πάντων των συνομιλιών πριν αληθεί το Κυπριακό.
Ε, και εντάξει, ο κόσμος έκανε ερωτήσεις, ε, συζητήσαμε, ε, είμαστε πάρα πολύ ευχαριστημένοι από την, από την εκτήλωση αυτή. Ε, τουλάχιστον έχουν, έχει βεβαιωθεί ότι δεν ήταν φίλος πόλεμος, δηλαδή ένα διάστημα είχαν, προσπάθησαν να το διαδώσουν στον κόσμο ότι είναι φίλος πόλεμος που είχε γίνει και όχι εισβολή, όπως πολύ σωστά είπατε πριν ακριβώς, λίγο. Ακριβώς δυστυχώς των τελευταίων καιρών βλέπουμε και εμείς ότι γίνεται μια προσπάθεια, δεν ξέρω από ποιου, αλλά οπωσδήποτε είναι τα, ε, οδηγείται από την, από την Τουρκία, ε, ότι δεν πρέπει πλέον να λέμε να μιλούμε για εισβολή, για κατοχή. Και αυτό είναι λαθασμένο. Ε, δεν πρόκειται το μαύρο να λέμε ότι είναι άσπρο. Για ποιο λόγο. Εμά μα πήραν τα σπίτια μα. Θέλουμε να επιστρέψουμε πίσω. Είμαστε πρόσφυγε. Αυτό να πετούμε, αυτό θέλουμε. Και λέμε ότι την πραγματικότητα. Αν έγινε εισβολή και κατοχή τη Κύπρου. Και αυτό πρέπει να το λένε όλοι. Μέχρι ότου η, η Τούρκη εισβολή, ε, η κατοχή τη Κύπρου τερματιστεί και επιστρέψουν οι πρόσφυγε στα σπίτια του. Αυτό θέλουμε και αυτό απαιτούμε. Και ήταν πολύ ευχάριστο το ότι είχαμε δει και νέου ανθρώπου στην αίθουσα. Αν μπράβο, ακριβώ είναι αυτό το. Έτσι, ένα μεγάλο. Το, 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 το καταλάβετε κι εσεί. Είχαμε περίπου το 1 τρίτο τη αίθουσα, δηλαδή μιλούμε 30-40 άτομα, ε, ήταν νεολαία, από 17 χρόνων πιο μικρό, ο οποίο. Σηκώστηκε πάνω και μίλησε, συγχαρητήρα στον μικρό που μίλησε. Νομίζω ότι το όνομα του είναι Παναγιώτη, αν δεν κάνω λάθο. Και ε, στα άλλα τα παιδιά που παρευρέθησαν εδώ, ε, η ΠΟΜΑΚ έκανε μια πάρα πολύ καλή δουλειά. Η ΠΟΜΑΚ είναι το, η νεολαία του Federation τη Ομοσπονδία και έκανε και κάνει μια πάρα πολύ καλή δουλειά με την νεολαία. Ελπίζω να συνεχίσουμε αυτή την καλή δουλειά ε, για να αναλάβουν τα ενία η, η νεολαία. Σας ευχαριστώ πάρα πολύ και είναι σημαντικό να γίνονται αυτές οι εκδηλώσεις και έχουμε εσάς σαν πρεσβευτές στο εξωτερικό για να γίνεται πιο έντονη η προσπάθειά μας. Και εγώ ευχαριστώ με τη σειρά μου, ευχαριστώ το Hellenic TV ε, για, την, ε, για την ώρα που μας έδωσε, για την κάλυψη που μας έδωσε, για την υποστήριξη που, που μας δίνει το Hellenic TV ε, συνεχώς. Σας ευχαριστώ. ευχαριστώ, αλλά περισσότερο ευχαριστώ τον κόσμο της παρικίας που μας υποστήριξε ένα μεγάλο ευχαριστώ στην Επιτροπή του Συνδέσμου Αμοχώστου, στα μέλη του Συνδέσμου Αμοχώστου, που υποστήριξαν αυτήν την ωραία, αυτήν την ωραία εκδήλωση. Σας ευχαριστώ.